Okay. Part three, we're going to talk about the author Sui Sin Far and the context of her, the writing of the story. So Sui Sin Far is a pseudonym that is a name that an author uh, took for herself, not a real name. She was um, born Edith Eaton. Sui Sin Far is a Chinese Cantonese word for the flower Narciss Narcissus. And she picked it up. Uh, she was born, um, uh, her father was an, she was born in England. Her father was an Englishman and her mother was Chinese. So even from her genetics, she has this double identity or split identity that we talked about in the last section of the class. When she grew up, uh, she became a reporter and she advocated for uh, Chinese immigrants who were very, very much mistreated by the American mainstream society. And as I said, she chose a Chinese sounding pen name, which is uh, not something that should be taken for granted because the Chinese people uh, during the, ending, the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century were probably the most hated people in the United States possibly with the exception of African-American. They were, the, the, they were treated with a lot of racism. And a lot of Chinese people who could pass as white did so. And she could have just tried to be uh, white, but she chose to identify with her Chinese roots. So uh, they were brought. Um, they were brought into the United States uh, as cheap labor, mostly men. So there were like twenty men for every one, for every single Chinese woman, in the United States around the turn of the twentieth century. And the the racism the racism against them was totally explicit. There were uh, federal laws, federal laws that uh, excluded them from becoming citizens because they came from Asia or from Ch China. Just explicitly, Chinese people cannot be American citizens. And this is kind of law that would could not possibly be accepted today, but was acceptable 100% a uh, hundred years ago and um, there were horrible horrible stereotypes about them as uh, sexual predators how to get white women a little bit like what we talked about with uh, stereotypes about uh, arabs and about and uh, this idea of uh, that there's plots to take over the United States, Chinese plots to take over the United States. Those conspiracy theories are still circulating, but were um, very, very powerful um, in the beginning of the 20th century and are known as the, the theory of the yellow menace. Okay, like the Chinese people supposedly have yellow skin and, that's, and they are the yellow menace. They want to take over white America. Here are some uh, caricatures. This is about, this shows Uncle, Uncle Sam kicking out um, a Chinese person, excluding them from the US, ex um, sending them back to Asia to see this ugly stereotype of what Chinese people uh, look like with their pigtail. This one is a little critical of the United States, how they choose uh, only to exclude the Chinese. See here, an, a Native American, an African American, an Italian, maybe somebody from Turkey, they are all welcome but we are going to pick on the Chinese and get them out of here. This is the representative of beautiful America. And uh, here, um, 
there's uh, you can maybe read it be just even to john chinaman so um maybe critical of this mistreatment but the 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 way they are depicted is quite ugly so even when you're critical of the mistreatment the stereotype still stands and this is the atmosphere to which in which uh, mrs uh, spring uh, fragrance which you read was written 